Hey all, Jed's here. Thanks for tuning in. This is a 35,000 mile review update of my 2018 Triumph Bonneville T120. So the bike now has 35,335 miles. Uh, I just did a 1,000 mile day with it. Uh, it would be an iron butt saddle sore, but I don't actually care to take use barbaric, barbaric paper, record keeping, and send checks. Who uses checks these days? So uh, the uh, Iron Butt Association, I've had a couple people already make comments about that. And I was going to say this, guys. Uh, just look at my Ferris Butts dis disorganization, and uh, you can kind of see that I don't really care. As long as people record that they do a thousand miles and put it on social media or any kind of documentable uh, media and have GPS tracking and all that stuff, guess what? You did a thousand miles and you don't need to go and get it certified for 70 bucks or whatever and deal with paper. So that's why I don't. So that's my little spiel. I'm just going to go straight into that and I apologize, but it just drives me bananas. So. I've already had people say, well, it's not a true 1,000 mile ride because you didn't document it. All I gotta say is, freaking suck a coin. Anyways, so uh, the bike's now got 35,000 miles. It's uh, 14 months old um, in seven days, and she has been very, very good. Uh, the transmission was replaced at 20,000 miles. Uh, if you followed any of my other videos, you'll know that six gear blew uh, during uh, cruise control, cruising uh, about 55, 60 miles an hour, and boop, six gear went. It was an out output shaft issue uh, with, uh, I guess there was something wrong with the gear itself that it grenaded. So, bummer. Anyways, bike's been running great with the new transmission. I've had no issues so far this year, which is actually the one thing I wanted to say. I've put about 15,000 miles on this bike so far this year since March, which is pretty crazy because you think about it, it's March, April, May, June, four months I've done 15,000 miles. So uh, I'm doing pretty good. This bike has been running phenomenal this year. I've had no issues, no complaints. I did the chain and sprockets at 23,000 miles. Uh, I'm running an EK X-Ring chain. I think it's like uh, rated up to like uh, 1200 CC uh, bikes. Um, I don't know. It's tinsel strength like 9,000 pounds. It's not the best chain out there, but it's a decent chain. It seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, I just lubed it with, I keep it lubed with bar and chain oil from a chainsaw and then I just kind of hit it with some Maxima chain wax or PJ1 blue that kind of seals it in. So I clean with the, the ch bar and chain lube and seal it in with, uh, with uh, PJ1 or Maxima and it works great. So uh, bikes, the chain's looking good. I'm running a 42 tooth sprocket in the rear, so it's bigger in the rear. Uh, keeping the stock 17th front sprocket just to kind of get a little bit more acceleration, but um, a little more power in the top gear, especially for, for riding around um, in the, the twisty stuff. So it's been working pretty good, but I'm also maintaining decent fuel economy, actually really good fuel economy. Uh, the bike's been getting about 55 miles per gallon which is really good. Uh, depending on how I ride it, if I'm doing a lot of tour, like town stuff, uh, the bike is not doing so great on fuel economy. It gets about uh, 48 to 52. But uh, when I was touring, I had my top case on, I kept that on for the review, and my windscreen, I kept it on for the review, and we'll go into that. But I, with those two things on, I was still getting 55 miles per gallon between trips. I was getting around 180 to 200 miles per fill between gas stops, which is just awesome. And I'll tell you, you're really looking to get off this bike at that point. So, um, you know, if you want some up ideas about, or, you know, what I did with the suspension, I did upgrade the suspension. There's a, you know, subscribe to my channel. There's a bunch of information there. It'll go over uh, what I've done to the suspension. I will also post a link on that. So if you want to know the details, but you can tell that uh, I have a front end stabilizer to get rid of the oscillation, which has been, uh, was an issue, slight, slight issue, and coming down, uh, powering out of turns, or going at top speed over uh, 80 miles, 90 miles an hour, which 
I don't do very often, but it definitely shored the front end up and it friggin' runs, rides like it's on rails. Uh, I am still running the, the tubeless conversion. I have had no issues. I have replaced the front valve stem with a standard rubber valve stem, automotive valve stem, uh, just because, um, you know, uh, it was the other one was getting a little bit of a leak like a very slow leak So the one of the o-rings was compromised. I might have been my fault installing But I uh, just replaced it and I'm still using the 3m tape. This stuff does not leak I have not had to put air in any of my tires uh, <clears throat> I this one's got no leaks. This tire is now at um, Just about 17,000 miles No, wait mm. About 16,000, 15,000 miles. I replaced that around 20-ish thousand miles. I can't really recall the exact number. And uh, the tire's wearing great. Uh, I should probably replace it in maybe another 5,000 miles or so. I better get 20,000 out of this tire. And uh, I'm running a Pilot Road 4 GT, 120, 70, 7, 18 in the front. And uh, 160, 50, 17, ZR17 in the rear. Uh, this is a Road 5. I really like the Road 5 on this. I'm going to probably go back to the uh, 150 70 just because I like the added tire height. I did lose some ground clearance even with the, the 20 millimeter rise in my suspension. I still lost some clearance going to the 160. So I'm going to go back to the 150. But this tire is lasting pretty good. Um, you can kind of see it's been burred up a bit. I've been, I ride it hard. And uh, <clears throat> I'd say this tire is probably going to last me seven to about the uh, 8,000 mile mark, maybe 9,000 mile mark. Last tire lasted me about 11,000 miles. Uh, just a lot of slabbing on the interstate just kills your tires. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think you're going to get a lot more miles out of this one because the windy stuff wears the tire out nicely. And it's starting to flat out. Things to keep an eye on, uh, especially if you got this bike, uh, you'll notice that in, over time, this thing will start to patina. Uh, it's got some scratches, some micro scratches. You know, you can kind of just see here that things are just kind of, you know, getting a little worn out. Um, so just keep an eye on that. I, I use a I use a good wax. I try to keep it as sh you know clean and waxed as possible. But I also ride every day, rain, shine snow uh doesn't matter uh, it's a motorcycle so i ride it like a motorcycle and you'll definitely notice that some of these stuff is starting to scratch and i mean it's just used i mean think about it the bike's got thirty-five thousand miles and it's a year old so uh you know things are just going to get worn out a little bit faster so uh the other thing is to note is that this is starting to get kind of faded out and losing the shit shine here um this is where my legs sits and rests if I stand up or if I'm doing a lot of, of you know, hard, hard handling. If I'm like, you know, you're putting a lot of English and stuff. Uh, so I'm reaching and leaning over the bike. My legs are wearing on these side panels. So you're losing some of that shine. All cosmetic doesn't really affect the performance of the bike. So speaking of performance, uh, you'll notice that I'm still running the Unipod filters. I've had these on since uh, 30,000 miles, so about 5,000 miles. I'm gonna wash and rinse these. I'm gonna wash clean and re-oil because you can tell they're getting really dirty, but they do an exceptional job. Uh, they don't get sogged, so soaked up with water, so you, they work great in the rain. Uh, I've run them uh, a couple hundred miles in the rain, no issues, and the performance is pretty good. You get a lot more mid and upper, upper range. and there has been a lot of dyno proven results with going to pods so uh i really recommend it it's just so much easier to deal with than having to fuss with the air box to try to change filter element and all that jazz so uh chrome the chrome covers are still in pretty good shape i replaced these um i replaced these at uh right when i bought the bike um so no issues, no oil leaking, nothing, no scratches, no oddness. It's just, they look really, really good. And they still retain that shine and that reflectiveness. And I replaced them because I didn't want the aluminum to patina right out. So these are pretty holding up pretty freaking well. I just gotta say, definitely worth the money if you're looking to keep your engine looking clean because it just, they clean so dang easy. 
So I've got the Motone X-Pipe installed. I also have MGO reverse cone mufflers. I get asked this all the time. What are these? These are cheap MGO reverse cone mufflers. I repeat, repack them at 20,000, uh, 25,000 miles. So uh, the, the muffler packing that, that comes with these mufflers is absolute garbage and burns right out. So my, high, my recommendation is go ahead and just repack them as soon as you get them. But uh, the tone's real good and it sounds real good. Let me just uh, give you a good little start up. So it sounds good, it's loud, very loud, <laughs> but that's kind of why I like it. Um, other things to note is your brake pads. Your fronts are generally good around 20,000 miles. Your rear, for me, is pretty much toast at 10,000 miles. I need to replace these pads in a bad way. Also, the rear rotor is really starting to groove in a weird, 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 weird way. So, I don't know see that I don't know why it's not focusing there we go I'm starting to see how these grooves so just uh, keep an eye on that but uh, um, but you know I kind of try to keep the, the thing organized and uh, not organized cleaned and lubed and um, the brakes generally seem to last in the rear about 5,000 miles I think pretty soon I'm gonna need a new rotor. I think probably by 40,000, 45,000 miles, this rear rotor is gonna be just about toast, so I'm gonna to have to replace that. So keep that in mind uh, as a future, you know, well, what am I gonna to need to do on this bike if you ride hard? Um, you're gonna to need to do the rear rotors and the rear pads a lot. If you don't ride as, hard, ride, ride as hard as I do, they'll probably still need to be done, but just keep an eye on, on that. Uh, other things to note, um, the bike's running, it runs really good. Uh, I have a uh, KG rack that I pulled off a $500, uh, $300 parts bike, and it's been super stellar. I bought the rack, the Triumph Purpose rack, and it broke after like, I think it broke at like 15,000 miles. So this puppy's got probably close to 20,000 miles on it, and I you definitely load it probably as, as too much, <laughs> honestly and the thing just holds up well. They just don't make things like they used to. This came off a Yamaha Seca 750, I believe. So parts bike, pulled it off, put it on, bolted up pretty much the same. I had to put up some brackets here from the exhaust mount here, you know, uh, and bolt it here. And then it kind of rests on the, the suspension, but you know what, works, it works. And um, the windscreen is off a uh, Harley Davidson XR1200. So this is a XR1200 screen. I have um, Puig mounts for this screen, so I had to kind of customize it up to make it work. I like this screen because it offers some really good chest and protection. If you, you want to get out of the wind, you can just duck behind it and it does a good job. It looks good with the bike. It's a little tall but you know it works it works really good and I'm really happy with it so all in all I've got to say that the the Bonneville has been a great bike uh, the things to really recommend is to get those tubeless conversion get rid of those tubes I actually had an encounter where I got a puncture this year and I am so glad I had tubes because I pulled the, the nail out and I put put a plug in got it home and then took the tube out or took the tire off and then put an inner patch in because I just bought those tires and I didn't want to did, didn't want to replace them and I didn't want to buy a new one so I just pat, plugged and patched it and the tubes tubeless conversion has been great and I highly recommend that um, the cruise control I've had cruise control on my bike since day one that is definitely a, a definite 
added perk to this bike. It really makes it a long distance bike, you know, and the heated grips as well. But I have to say that the grips are really starting to wear out here. Just probably for me holding onto the thing so much. Um, you know, kind of just see that the rubber's kind of fading out here. Just bummer. Uh, make sure you do your brake fluid, you know. That's uh, another thing that you've got to keep your eye on. I did it this year. Uh, I do it every 20, 000, every year, you know, about 20,000, 30,000 miles, whatever happens in a year. Other thing to note here is that we're starting to see some some wear here on the on the, the ped, pegs themselves. The rubber's starting to kind of come off here. Uh, pretty soon I'll be worn through that. And of course, I grind the heck out of my bike so I grind that up. Also, I replaced the stock foot shifter with a Kiriakin unit. This did this in Daytona because I ground my shift, stock shifter out so much that it was cutting my boots and I was ruining boots faster than I could replace them. So uh, I got this Kiriakin shifter. At the same time, I got this Kiriakin fuel tank cap. This was like 30 bucks. And the reason I replaced this is my fuel cap actually turned into a giant geyser. It was like, it would get hot and then it would just spew gas all over me, all over the side of the bike. And <laughs> no good, no good. So I uh, replaced that. And uh, so those are the other things I replaced, uh, things to keep an eye on. All in all, it's been a solid bike. The engine is just one of the, my favorites. It may not be the fastest thing out there, but it's definitely quick, quick, quick. It has fun in the twisties. It has a lot of power for powering out. Mid-range, low-range power. But it also revs out pretty good. Um, I would suspect that someday I'd like to do the can do a cam upgrade. I'm going to do a tech 2-to-1 exhaust at some point. Uh, just because the stock system is starting to get leaky again. They got new gaskets. I put new gaskets in everything on the X-pipe. It was sounding exceptional the beginning of the year when I did the repacking and now it's starting to get loose again. So it's just, ugh, you just can't win. Other than that, I gotta say, it's been a pretty good bike so far for me this year. It's June 21st, I believe today. And uh, maybe it's the 22nd. I can't recall, but it's, um, I'm half, almost about halfway through my season. And um, I'm gonna keep racking on the miles on this thing. And uh, there's a really good chance that I'm gonna probably hit, you know, 50,000. I could hit 50,000 miles this year. That's only 15,000 miles away, uh, as long as I don't come any more catastrophic failures. But uh, the other thing to note is that Triumph stands behind their product. I am really, really, really lucky to have such an awesome dealer. I just got a new dealer in Vermont um, that's just like five minutes down the road from work. So I'm just super pumped that uh, I've got a great support system and these guys are just awesome. They treat me like gold and they always help me out. Uh, the last thing I also note is make sure that you get your tidy. If you get a used model, make sure that the warranty tidy is installed. They did the tidy here. Um, that was the last thing I wanted to kind of reach out because these cables can wear out the, the harness, which it kind of did. You can kind of see how it's ate that tape, but now that that thing is just not, there's not as much pressure on the wiring harness because of that tidy. So I'll keep an eye on that, but I have had no issues. So we'll just see what happens. All right, all well, I recommend that you subscribe if you want to keep updated, keep updates on uh, the Bonneville. Like I said, I'm really sorry I wasn't able to make a better, higher quality productive production, but I'm going to tell you, I'm kind of just spending way too much time riding this thing, not filming this thing. And uh, it's just been a blast, and it's just running like a champ, and it's just it's just tougher than a coffin nail. They really did a great job here. So with that being with all that all, make sure you guys subscribe, like, um, check out my my brethren at uh, Amen Moto. Uh, if you want to see this bike being used in a daily rider in a stock setup, uh, Scott Amen at Amen Moto has a 2016 Triumph Bonneville T120. And he's got a fair amount of miles on that as well, but over 20,000. And uh, he, he's got a lot of good information as well. And he just loves riding. So go over there if you like to watch someone having a good time on a T120. <clears throat> also check out my boys at Cafe Racer Podcast, Crash and Steve, or Daddy No Fun. Uh, you can also check out 
Steve Case at Special Case Customs uh, on Instagram. He's got some great bikes, does some great, great stuff. Also, shout out to Wes Fleming uh, with the BMW MOA. He does great material like uh, Chasing the Horizon and 200 Miles Before Breakfast, which is uh, an exclusive podcast just for BMW MOA owners. I'm hoping someday I get to get an interview on there. <laughs> And then uh, the last shout out goes, goes to Chris Geis. Uh, Chris Geis is a awesome guy who started a podcast called uh, So You Want to Ride a Motorcycle. And if you are a guy that's just kind of wandering around looking to get back in the sport or looking to get in the sport and you're really looking at Bonnevilles and you kind of are thinking about, well, this might be a good bike, which they are, uh, check out Chris's uh, podcast. Uh, he's got some great new material. He gets really targeted towards getting people on board for riding motorcycles or getting back into motorcycles. Anyways, there's my plugs. This is all I got. 35,000 miles. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to try to, I'll do a 40,000 mile update, probably something similar to this. Uh, if anything arises, if not, I'm just going to keep trucking boys and girls. Well, thanks for tuning in. You guys have a great day. Keep that shiny side up and ride safe out there. Best.